dear sisters and brothers. A power of sin. Every sin justified will bring a power, an evil power into your heart. That's what St. Paul says. Ephesians 4.26. Ephesians 4.26. St. Paul said, get angry. But do not commit a sin. Let not the sun set on your anger. Before the sun set, I should go and get reconciled. I must ask pardon. I must get reconciled. If I don't do that, I am justifying that sin. Every sin justified will come back as a temptation. I will fall back into it again. And St. Paul says, Thus, you are giving entry to Satan. You are giving entry to Satan. What is Satan? Don't imagine Satan is a dark figure with a tail and two horns on the head. That is the artistic imagination. Satan is an evil power. A power, a power that resides, that dwells in my heart. For example, anger. I'm angry. I keep an anger. That anger is a demonic power. It's a satanic power. Why demonic? Demonic because I have, I have no control over that. I have no control over that. Rather, that is controlling me. That anger is controlling me. Haven't you heard someone saying, Anger is hanging down my nose. It easily slips into my mouth. And then the things I scream out. I have no choice. Once I justify evil, and that evil comes to reside, comes to dwell in me as an evil power, I have no choice. I have no control over that. I will fall back into it again. Because I am under the spell of that evil power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Take another example. Drinking. Why does someone drink? For the taste of it. For the taste of it. For curiosity. And then, a second time. Second time in a party. A third time to celebrate a birthday I drank. A fourth time to repeat that taste. A fifth, sixth, every time I drank, I justified it. I justified it. <clears throat> By many ways I justify it. Now, now one drinks, not because there is any taste in it, not because there is any party, not because there is a birthday, I drink because I cannot but drink. If I don't drink, I will feel terrible. Ask an alcoholic. Tie him with a chain somewhere. Somehow he will break the chain and go and drink. He cannot but drink. That evil power, that evil power of alcoholism is holding him a captive. It's an evil power. Many people ask, what's the big problem with drinking? Social drinking. Everybody drinks. I also drink. It's like drinking water. It's not like drinking water, my brother my sister. There is a power of addiction in drinking. That addiction will hold me captive. It is a time that will tell, tell me I'm an addict. I can't but do it. The same is true about every sin. Drugs, smoking, smoking, you cannot but smoke. You smoke, you justified it. Every sin justified comes back as a temptation. You fall back into it. And now you cannot but smoke. Gambling, pornography, video games. Mobile phone. I told you yesterday not to use mobile phones. But today I found quite a few going about with a mobile phone. I wanted to go and tell them. But I control myself. 
I said, I respect you. You are honorable people. I respect you. But this must be an addict. He cannot but, he cannot but use the mobile phone. It is an addiction. Video games. You ask children. You know, some children. In the lower standards, they do very well, very well. But in the high school, they fail or their grades fall. And the reason would be a video game. Today, all sorts of video games. You just can't put the mobile down. It's a video game. You go into it. It's an addiction. It's an evil power. It's a demonic power. There is Satan. There is Satan in it. In that video game. There is Satan. Satan leading you. Astray. And a boy or a girl. Boys are you listening to me? Girls are you listening to me? You understand me. If you become an addict. It becomes a habit for you to play video games. You are under the spell of Satan. The demonic power is holding you captive. You cannot but, you cannot but, I told the children to remind you. Remind every one of us here. Or a pornographic thing. How terrible it is. You can't but watch it. I will come to that later. My dear sisters and brothers, this is what sin is. Sin is not a thing we can play with. Oh, a little pleasure, a little kick. Where does that pleasure lead you to? Every pleasure, every kick, every gain of sin is a trap. It's a trap. It's a deceit. It's a trap Satan sets before you. As Adam and Eve were trapped. Adam and Eve were trapped. Soon they realized they were far away from God. Till that, they were the friends of God. Adam and Eve would run to God when God appears in the paradise. But that time after sin, when God came down, Adam and Eve were hiding. Hiding behind the tree. And God called Adam, where are you? Adam said, oh God, I'm hiding because I'm naked. But the big thing about nakedness, even before sin, Adam was naked, wasn't he? In the Bible, nakedness means emptiness. Emptiness. Oh God, I can't look at your face. Oh God, I have lost my standing with you. I lost my self-esteem. I can't come near you. I can't look at your face. That's exactly what sin brings us to. A man who goes into an unholy relationship will never be able to touch his wife honorably, affectionately, lovingly. Because he cannot stand near his wife, his children. Because he knows he lost his self-esteem. This is what sin is. And this is what the Lord is telling us today. You become a slave. You become blind. What is blindness? You don't judge whether anybody is blind looking at the eyes. No, blindness is in the heart. And Jesus said it, John chapter 9, the spiritual blindness. The Pharisees and scribes, they knew that Jesus was the Savior. All the prophecies were fulfilled in Him. They knew that. And yet, and yet, they could not accept Him. They were blind. And that's why Jesus told them, about them, you are Blind leaders leading everyone into blindness. My dear sisters and brothers, blindness and the power of sin, oppression, the power of sin coming 
to dwell in our hearts, to oppress a pressure, a pressure of sin, a pressure of lust, a pressure of greed, a pressure of unforgiveness, a pressure of hatred, a pressure of drinking, an evil that dwells in our hearts as a pressure, an evil urge, unholy urge, an evil urge. I just can't but, I just can't but get it. I'm a slave. I'm blind. I'm, I'm oppressed. That's where sin leads us to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My dear sisters and brothers, When we go for confession, it's not enough to say, I committed a sin. No. We must look into it. Why did I commit that sin? And what flows out of that sin? What flows out of that sin? We must look at sin in its entirety in order to understand the cruel, the terrible thing that sin is. And that will enable us to turn to the Lord and find our forgiveness in our God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. A young man came here. He looked very sad. I asked him, my friend, why are you so sad? He showed me his hand. There were two cuts on his hands. Two times when he tried to to commit suicide. I asked him why. He said, Father, I'm an IT engineer. I come home late. I come home late, very late, after having met all the targets in the office. But Father, when I come home, exhausted, just wanting to go to bed and sleep, I would never be able to go to bed. I enter my room. I see the computer. A computer with an internet connection. When I see that computer, I automatically sit at the side of this computer. And my fingers would move automatically on the keyboard to bring the dirty the filthy, the unholy sites of the internet, sites of pornography. He said, Father, when I watch them, I would know this is inhuman. I should not be looking at them. They make me dirty. I should not be looking at them. But Father, I would never be able to shut down the computer from bad to worse. From the worst to the worst. From the worst to the more worst, if there's a word like that. There's no word like that in English. But evil is so terrible. It will drag us to the depths of dirt. He said, Father, I would go to bed very late. But I would never be able to sleep well. All those unholy sights I watched, I gulped down, would come back haunting me in my sleep. I would never be able to sleep well. In the morning I will wake up more tired than when I went to bed. I would wash myself and go and sit at the breakfast table. That's when I would see my darling sister coming, all dressed up to go to college with a smile. But Father, when I see my sister, I would feel terrible. I have lost the eyes of a brother. I'm not able to look at my sister with the holy eyes of a brother. All those are atrocious. Sights I watched the previous night would come back superimposed on the body of my sister. 
I would feel terrible. I would curse myself. I would hate myself. I would make a decision never to do it again. But that night, when I come home, I will do it again. I became so desperate. I cut my hands twice to commit suicide to kill myself. I told him, my friend, if you had succeeded in that attempt, the Satan would have had his way. That's what Satan comes in. The Satan of lust has come into your heart to dwell in your heart to destroy, to plunder and to kill. John 10.10 10. John 10.10 10. That's what Satan comes for. To destroy, to plunder and to kill. You would have been destroyed and killed and, and, and lost. But God had mercy on me. He said, Father, tell me what can I do? I told him, my friend, you can't do anything. You're a slave. A slave cannot pull himself out of slavery. Somebody else should pull him out of his slavery. That's what Jesus promises. I read out to him this passage that I read out to you. I told him, you are a slave. You're blind. You're oppressed. There's a pressure. The pressure of the evil of lust on you. The only way is to surrender your life in the hands of God. I told him a story. A story, you may have heard of the story of a Chinese missionary by name Watchman Nee. Watchman Nee, a Chinese missionary, was traveling on a train, and one bogey train. That was moving along the villages of China very slowly. And Watchman Nee, in this evening, he took the Bible and began to read. That's when three youngsters sitting on the other side of the compartment, they were bored. They looked at each other. How terrible! Why can't this train run faster? Another one said, don't shout. Whether you shout or not, it's only pace this train would move. A third one said, shall we play cards and entertain ourselves the whole night? I have a pack of cards. But they were only three. They knew only one game. A game that needs four. That's when they looked at the other side of the compartment. And so this elderly man, they did not know who he was. But saw him reading a book. They did not know what book it was. But one thing they knew, this must be an educated person. He would know to play cards. The three of them went to him and smiled. When you want something from someone, they smiled, right? And they smiled. Sir, they said, we know you are bored. We are also bored. Shall we play cards? The whole night we shall play cards and entertain ourselves. And watchmen need said, oh, playing cards, I love it. They were happy. But then watchmen need said, my friends, I have a problem. To play cards, I have no hands. And the three youngsters looked at him, wondering what he meant. He was gesturing with his hands and saying, I have no hands to play cards. Watch me knee so that wonder in their eyes. And he said, oh, these hands, these hands are not mine. These hands are offered, given. These hands are consecrated to my master. These hands belong to my master. I have no use of these hands. I can use them as I want. I have no ownership of these hands. These hands are offered to my master. They asked him, Sir, tell me, who is your master? Oh, my master! I forgot to tell you, my master is Jesus Christ. 
And then he explained to them, you know what Jesus did? Jesus offered himself on the cross. He spread his hands on the cross for nails to be driven into. He offered his life to be crucified. And that's why I was saved. I was saved. If today, if I'm breathing, if I'm using my hands, if I'm free with my hands, it is because my master offered his hands to be nailed to the cross. The more I look at the cross, the more I'm overwhelmed by the love with which my master loved me. My master loved me so much. My master is so fond of me. He, he wants me to be saved. And for this, he offered himself on the cross. And I said to myself, I need to love my master. I need to offer my life to him. As my master offered his life to me, I offered my hands. I offered my legs. I offered my life. I offered myself in the hands of my master that I may love him. I am consecrated to my master. And therefore, I can use my hands as I want. Then he asked them, friends, tell me, shall I ask permission from my master to use my hands to play cards? And they said, no, sir. He wanted to know more about that master. And the whole night, Washman Yee spoke to them about Jesus. In the morning, when the train reached the destination, all three of them went with him and became missionaries in China. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. My dear sisters and brothers, that is the truth. What did Jesus do for us? He offered himself in order that we may be saved. I told this youngster, this young man, IT engineer, my friend, that's what Jesus did for us. He offered himself that we may be saved. And we have to offer ourselves to him to repay that great debt. As the word of God tells us, we are indebted to Jesus my whole life. My whole life. I'm indebted to Jesus. And this is what repentance is. To understand my hands don't belong to me. My eyes don't belong to me. I can't use my hands, my eyes as I want. I told this young man, my friend, when he come home in the evening, he must ask Jesus, Lord, what shall I do? Shall I sit by the side of the computer? If you are allowed, then sit. But then as the master, Lord, what shall I do? Shall I open this, these sides of the computer? Wait for a permission because that computer is not yours. It belongs to Jesus. Your eyes are not yours. Your hands are not yours. Your body is not yours. Your sexuality is not yours. It is of the Lord. Surrender your life in the hands of God. Every day, do this. I saw him two months after. I asked him, my friend, how do you feel? He said, Father, I feel great. He said, he read that passage. John chapter 15, verses 1 onwards, where Jesus said, I am the vine you are the branches. You abide in me. I will abide in you. You keep close to me. I keep close to you. Father, I keep close to Jesus, my master, my Lord and my Savior. And in the beginning, it looked a little artificial. But now, it has become a way of living. I'm not doing anything for myself. The way I walk, the way I move my hands, the way I speak, I'm not doing anything for myself. I do everything for Jesus. My life has become a life of love. 
repaying the love with which I am loved by my master and that's what repentance is to surrender our life surrender our voice surrender our eyes surrender our money surrender everything in the hands of the lord that the lord will guide us moment after moment and when we are able to make this decision that will change our lives you know some years ago we often have here youth retreat a few young people college students came here for a retreat they invited us to their college to give a retreat when we went there for the retreat we saw the organizers they were wearing a t-shirt at the back of the t-shirt there was this writing i am the slave of jesus a hand pointing then who slave are you i am the slave of jesus who slave are you if you and i my dear sisters and brothers if we are not slaves of jesus we are the slaves of pride hatred anger lust drinking habit all the powers of sin that dwells in our heart my dear sisters and brothers let us today make a total surrender of our lives in the hands of god that we may be set free free for god free for others that we may make our life a love a response of love to our god hallelujah thank you jesus praise you jesus